Hello. For those who don't know me, my name is Eric. In this video about van conversion, I will explain how I did my solar shower system, including specific features to be used with a vehicle. What I will show you is not a video, see what I just made. It is a real field tested shower system that has been on the roof of my van for years. It has traveled north and south and from coast to coast in the United States and Canada in desert heat as well as Canada's ice and snow without any problem. First thing to say is that a solar shower is a must to me. It provides an extra tank of water, a self-eating system, the same washing comfort as home, Hardware requires no storage space. Hardware requires no drying to avoid mold. Water capacity for multiple showers. No hassles compared to chem gear. To learn more about the importance of body hygiene to enjoy van life, I invite you to look at my video Avoid Misery. To build that awesome van equipment, I use only those basic tools and elbow oil as my father used to say. The first problem to solve is to not accidentally lose the solar shower system while driving. In the traffic, when you have to brake hard, you do not want to send a torpedo to the car in front of you. The second problem to solve is how to attach such a cylinder that crosses a roof rack made of two transversal bars. The third problem is to be sure not to exceed the weight capacity of your roof rack and your vehicle. The fourth problem is how to fix a faucet to an ABS cap. The fifth problem is how to get water pressure. First problem about the first problem of not losing the shower tube while braking hard, consider this. When braking, water will move in the cylinder. The water will move up front and hit the front cap of the tube and then will flow towards the back, hit the rear and back and forth until stabilizing. When the solar shower is not full, there is more room for that phenomenon to happen. What we want is to reduce those impulses and destabilizations. They are hard on everything that holds the water tube. Here's what I did to avoid this. I divided the tube in three sections and I separated those sections with two water restriction discs to slow down the water velocity when braking. I placed those discs with their slots at 90 degrees to slow the water velocity even more. As restriction discs, I simply used floor drain covers. With a simple manual metal saw, I cut the tube part of it to obtain a sample disc. It is important to choose a hole pattern that will allow the water to reach the bottom of the cylinder as low as possible. Otherwise, you won't be able to use all the water contained in the tube. That disc is simply added between two tube sections. It is captive in the middle of a coupling assembly sleeve. I used ABS material and ABS glue to assemble it all. It is very easy. At the front end of the tube, I put a removable cap rather than a permanently glued cap. Both will work, but when you plan to cross country borders, it is preferable to choose a system that allows custom officers 
to take a look inside the tube. For the back end of the tube, I did the same by putting a removable cap. Also, at that extremity, I used an angle fitting to create a low bottom point to fix the faucet. Effectively, to use all the water in the tube, the faucet must be lower than the bottom of the cylinder. That way, you can use all the water capacity of the tube. Also, to avoid the tube to be launched like a torpedo, I planned it such as to position the edges of the coupling assembly sleeve to act as stoppers on the roof rack. I did this for both rack bars. This is a very efficient way to block any upfront movements. Second problem, how to attach that cylinder set to two crossbars. I simply used two stainless steel hose clamps with pieces of wood to avoid the rolling movements. Third problem is not to exceed the weight capacity of the vehicle and the roof rack. This one is easy to solve. Everything is written in the user manual of the vehicle and in the roof rack manual. You won't be surprised to find out that an added crossbar rack can be stronger to the original transversal rack of the vehicle. The best way to learn and be sure about specific vehicle and roof rack weight capacity is to take a short ride to your local vehicle rack store and ask a few questions. Those guys are qualified and will know about this. Fourth problem, how to install a faucet to an ABS cap. I simply used a washing machine faucet that I sealed with silicone. I drilled a simple hole, inserted the faucet, then fixed it to the cover with a simple nut on the inside. After I stuff plenty of silicone on both sides to perfectly seal it. Fifth problem, how to get water pressure. I simply installed a truck air tank valve at the top of the water filling cover. I installed it with the same technique as I did for the washing machine faucet. I sealed it with silicone from the inside. You can find this kind of valve at your local automotive parts store. I have tried different alternatives and this is definitely the best way to do this. Operating the shower. Filling the tube with water. To fill the shower tube with water, I put an opening at the top. I simply carry an adjustable wrench to loosen and tighten the cover. Putting the system under pressure. I simply use a small air compressor to put pressure. It is important to put less pressure than the maximum pressure capacity of the tube and its components. I never put much more than 30 psi in my system. Now, the only thing missing is a shower cabinet. Firstly, I would like to say that I am not a fan of shower tents and pop-up shower tents for a few reasons. I have camped hundreds of nights, maybe more than a thousand, in tents. If there is something that I hate when tenting, it's waiting for the tent to dry before storing it. You do not want it to develop mold or deteriorate by storing it wet. With a shower tent, you do not only completely soak it with water, but you do this on the inside of the tent, making it an extra challenge to dry off. Those tents are costly compared to my solution. 
The pop-up ones are very bulky to store. As a subscriber mentioned, if the sun is out while you use it, people can cast your shadow, which is not good for Van Lifer's reputation. I will explain my shower cabinet and why I prefer my solution in a coming video. I invite you to subscribe not to miss it and also to not miss plenty of interesting videos for enthusiastic van lifers. Give me some feedback. It is much more interesting for me. I also appreciate very much knowing from which state or country you have just watched my video. I much enjoy feeling the aspect of sharing with people from everywhere. Oh my god. Stay tuned, my fellow van lifers. If you have not seen my van tour, go see it. See ya!